the dive your babe flute is a cave bear femur pierced by spaced holes that was found in 1995 at the dive your babe archaeological park located near Cirkno in northwestern Slovenia. It has been suggested that it was made by Neanderthals as a form of musical instrument. Its whole spacing and alignment leading to its being labeled a Neanderthal flute. Slovenian archaeologist Mitja Brodar, however, argues that it was made by Cro-Magnons as an element of Central European or Ignatian culture. If it is a form of flute, it is possibly the world's oldest known musical instrument. The museum's visitor leaflet maintains that manufacture by Neanderthals is reliably proven. Site and similar findings in Slovenia. Divia Babe is the oldest known archaeological site in Slovenia. The site is the location of a horizontal cave, 45 meters long and up to 15 meters wide. It is located 230 meters above the Adriachar River, near Cirkno, and is accessible to visitors. Researchers working at this site have uncovered more than 600 archaeological finds in at least 10 levels including 20 hearths and the skeletal remains of cave bears, and have studied climate change during the Pleistocene. According to the museum, the presumed flute has been associated with the end of the Middle Pleistocene and the time of Neanderthals. About 55,000 years ago, this is not the only such site in Slovenia. In the 1920s and 1930s, the archaeologists Reka Brodar discovered tens of bones with holes in another site, Poto Cave in the eastern Caravanka, but almost all of them were destroyed during Italian occupation of Ljubljana in World War II. The best known of them, still preserved, is a mandible of a cave bear with three holes in the mandibular canal. Since World War II, specimens have also been found in Mokrika Cave, Beetle Rock Shelter, and elsewhere. These bones are preserved today at the National History Museum of Slovenia in Ljubljana, the capital. According to the archaeologist who discovered many of them, Mitja Brodar, bones with holes were never found in the Western Europe, and they have been dated only to the end of the Mausterian and the beginning of the Aurignacian. Such bones were discovered also elsewhere in Central Europe, but in a much lower number, and it is unlikely that cave bears would make such holes only in Central Europe and only in a specific period. That these bones are still not recognized by international research community Mitja Brodar attributes to the fact that most of the bones were found on the territory of France and the Paleolithic is still considered to be the French domain. Although not a single bone with holes have been found there, the only bone point with a hole ever discovered was found in Poto Cave. According to Brodar, such holes are an element of Central European or Ignatian. They have been ascribed to the Cro-Magnon, modern human. According to Brodar, the dive your babe flute is a product of modern humans as well, but this has been disputed by other Slovene scholars. Neanderthal flute in 1995, Ivan Turk found an approximately 43,100-year-old juvenile cave bear femur at the Divya Babe site, near a Mausterian hearth. Because it has characteristics of a flute, he has called it a Neanderthal flute. Whether it is actually a flute created by Neanderthals is a subject of debate. It is broken at both ends, and has two complete holes in what may be the incomplete remains of one hole on each end, meaning that the bone may have had four or more holes before being damaged. The bone fragment is the diaphysis of the left femur of the one to two-year-old cave bear, and is 113.6 mm long. The maximum diameters of the two complete holes are 9.7 and 9.0 mm. The distance between the centers of the holes is 35 mm. If the bone is a flute, it would be evidence of the existence of music 43,000 years ago. Thus Ivan Turk has asserted that whether the holes are of artificial or natural origin is the crucial question. The bone has become a noted attraction in the National Museum of Slovenia. Publicized on official Slovenian websites aired on TV with tunes played on a clay replica and is a source of pride for the country.
In the West, paintings were made, models constructed, and musicians such as biology professor and flautist Gel Artima have played him publicly. French-based Italian taphonomist Francesco Derrico, Holderman and Serangeli, as well as Chase and Noel hypothesized its carnivore origin. Hole spacing and alignment The probability that four randomly placed holes would appear in line in a recognizable musical scale is on the order of a few in several million. According to an analysis made in 2000 by Canadian musicologist Bob Fink, responding to the Derrico Al's carnivore origin hypothesis, Turk pointed out that the features common between the carnivore origin artifact and other chewed bones studied by Derrico do not include the alignment of the holes. There is also no evidence that the two holes could have been bitten at the same time. The tooth spans were analyzed by all taphonomists concerned to see if any animals could bite two or more such holes at once. No match could be found to any known animals. If a match had been found, it could have been cited as prima facie evidence that the holes were animal-made. This was noted by Turk Al, in his monograph, and was also noted from the opposing hypothesis holders Noel and Chase in their article in the August-October 1998 issue of Current Anthropology. Holes in the specimen, wrote Noel Al were almost certainly made sequentially rather than simultaneously and that the distance between them has nothing to do with the distance between any two teeth in a wolf store. Ian Morley, despite his holding the carnivore origin hypothesis, in an additional observation to his November 2006 article observed that W. Hills the collections of cave bear bones examined by Derrico Al, as well as those discussed by Turk Al, do show similar shaped and damaged holes. None of these occur in the diaphysis of a femur, as is found on the reputed flute. Marcel Otter pointed out in a current anthropology article that there is a possible thumb hole on the opposite side of the divia babe bone, which, making five holes, would perfectly fit a human hand. Turk wrote in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology book The Origins of Music. If this probability of having lined up holes looking like a flute were greater, it is likely that there would have been more such finds. Since carnivores in cave dens were at least as active on bones, if not more so, than people in cave dwellings, hole shaped Derrico Al made an analysis of the artifact in comparison to cave bare bone accumulations where no hominid presence was known. They published photos of several bones with holes in them which had more or less circular holes similar to those found in the artifact but they did not have a single bone coming even close to the linear alignment of Turk's holes. Ignoring the probability of the alignment of the holes, Derek Al's interpretation was that it was possible for the holes to have been made by an animal, and they concluded that of the available options this was the most likely. Derrico insisted on ignoring the probability of the alignment of the holes and even after having analyzed the artifact firsthand claimed that the presence of two or possibly three perforations on the suggested flute cannot therefore be considered as evidence of human manufacture. As this is a common feature in the studied sample, Turk conducted laboratory experiments which pierced holes in fresh bare bones in the manner of carnivore punctures, and in every case, the bones split. Yet in the Divya Babe instance, the bone did not break, a fact not matching expectations of carnivore action, as Turk's results showed. Turk wrote, in his monograph and in his article in Mitz Origins of Music Anthology, the bone shows no counterbites that one would normally expect on the other side of the bone matching the immense pressure necessary for a bite to make the center holes. Turk's 1997 monograph reported that the holes have similar diameters which would accommodate fingertips, and all are circular instead of oval. Furthermore, all are in the proper ratio of bore size to hole size found in most flutes, and the bone is the kind usually used for bone flutes.
An examination of the specimen using computed tomography was published in 2005 by Ivan Turk al., in which he concluded that the two partially preserved holes were formally created before the damage or before the indisputable intervention of a carnivore. The National Museum of Slovenia argues that this evidence has finally refuted hypotheses that the bone was perforated because of a bear bite. The manufacture by Neanderthals is reliably proven, and its significance in the understanding of their capabilities and the development of music and speech is secure. Bone marrow The issue of how much bone marrow remains in the artifact is important, because the making of flutes from bone usually includes removing the marrow. Turk al. wrote that the marrow cavity is basically cleaned of spongios. The color of the marrow cavity does not differ from the color of the external surface of the bone, so we may conclude that the marrow cavity was already open at the time. Otherwise, it would be a darker color than the surface of the bone. As we know from colored marrow cavities of whole limb bones, April Noel stated in an interview that, at Turk's invitation, Noel and Chase went to Slovenia last year. They came away even more skeptical that the bare bone had ever emitted music. For one thing, both ends had clearly been gnawed away by something, perhaps a wolf, seeking greasy marrow. The holes could have simply been perforated in the process by pointed canine or carnassial teeth, and their roundness could be due to natural damage after the bone was abandoned. The presence of marrow suggests that no one had bothered to hollow out the bone as if to create an end-blown flute, says Noel, Turks willing to give it the benefit of the doubt, whereas we're not, diatonic scale Bob Fink claimed in his essay in 1997 that the bones holes were consistent with four notes of the diatonic scale based on the spacing of those four holes. The spacing of the holes on a modern diatonic flute are unique and not evenly spaced. In essence, Fing said, they are like a simple fingerprint. The Divube bones holes match those spacings very closely to a series of note holes in a minor scale. Noel and Chase wrote in Studies in Music Archaeology 3 that the juvenile bare bone was too short to play those four holes in tune to any diatonic series of tones and half tones. Noel, along with archaeologist Philip Chase, had serious doubts as soon as they saw photos of the bone on the internet. The Divya Bay bone bears some resemblance to the dozens of younger, uncontested bone flutes from European Upper Paleolithic up sites. But, says Noel, these obvious flutes are longer, have more holes, and exhibit telltale tool marks left from their manufacture. No such marks occur on the bare bone. Fink proposed that the spacing of the flute's holes matches music's standard diatonic scale. Noel and Chase teamed with a more musically inclined colleague to show that the bare bone would need to be twice its natural total length to conform to a diatonic scale. In a 2011 article Mattia Turk published the results of a collaboration with Lubin Dimkarowski, an academic musician who had made replicas of the artifact. The authors argue that the instrument encompassed a range of two and a half octaves, which can be extended to three octaves by overblowing. Dim Karoski created over 30 wooden and bone replicas of the flute and experimented with them. The replicas were made from femurs of juvenile brown bears provided by the Hunters Association of Slovenia, but also calf goat, pig, roe and red deer bones. In the end he concentrated on playing a replica made on a femur of a juvenile cave bear from Divya Bay by to come as close as possible to the dimensions of the original.